Hello again. Something a little different today. I want to take you back to 1989, September 1989. And to do that, traffic, to do that I've got to get rid of a few things. So, laser, gone. No golf watch today. I also don't want any of these things. Got to get rid of the woods. Now there's one thing I do have to add to my bag. And that is some top flights found out the rough. This is how I used to play. A bag full of irons and a putter. Top flight, absolutely no golfing brain. So I've got to get rid of that as well. All will be explained as we get playing. First, a warm up. So I guess the first thing to do is to compare equipment. I had a bag of irons from 3 iron to sand wedge. The 3 iron was 21 degrees. The pitching wedge was 50 degrees. Yep, my clubs were that old. Now I've got four iron to sand wedge, the four iron is 22 degrees, the pitching wedge is 46. So I have a gap wedge of 50, so I have the same number of clubs. And yes, this is the kind of stupid shot I would have taken on the relatively beginner golfer. Although I think I might have done better than that rather than knifing it into the tree root. So that's the equipment. What about the golf club? Well, I was a member at Gloucester. The yellow tees at Lillybrook are around about 6,000 yards. The yellow tees at Gloucester, where I was a member, was about 5,600 yards. Par 70, two par fives, four par threes. Whereas Lillybrook has got just the one par five. And Gloucester was considerably wider than this, so it was easier than this. And although some of the greens are well protected at Gloucester, not all of them were. Now these days I would not be taking a 4 iron here. I'd take a 5 iron and get it on the deck a lot sooner. But back then I would have hit my 4 iron or my 3 iron because I didn't have a golfing brain. All I did was estimate the yardage, as I'm doing today, and try and take the appropriate club to hit the green. Now this second green is very close to the clubhouse. And sometimes when the patio is loaded with people, I get a little embarrassed about having a camera. And so I make stupid mistakes on this second green. Now I was hitting my long irons reasonably well, and so every now and then, I would hit a green, even with my three iron. So, you might think you wouldn't have hit this green with a, your three iron back in the day, Simon. But of course, there were times that I did hit a three iron onto a green. So this is reasonably realistic. Now I have quite a big flaw in my swing at the moment which again is reasonably realistic to how I was playing golf back in 1989. So at the moment the ball's a little forward and my shoulders are open and a couple of you guys have spotted that and mentioned it in the comments. So I'm making horrible shots. And with a top flight I'm making horrible putts. I like that one. And that one. <laughs> dear, oh dear. So I got my first putter when I was seven years old. And I dabbled around, as you do, as a child, on a putting green. And then it was pitch and putt. 
And then I was actually a junior member here at Lilybrook with my dad. But I had no means of getting to the golf course. And on the weekend, my dad was playing competitions and couldn't bring me out to play and knock it around. So my junior year at Lilybrook, I hardly played at all. But I actually started playing for real in February 1988. And I borrowed my dad's clubs for a few rounds. Then I bought my own. And then in about July 1988, I joined Gloucester with a friend. And that's where my golfing journey really started. Oh, that's absolutely disgusting. Well, that's in the ditch. So we got a penalty drop. Now my very first round of golf at Gloucester as a member, 5,600 yards par 70, was the grand total of 135. Because I had the most wicked slice you've ever seen. Typical, typical beginner slice. It was something to behold. It might even have looked a bit like this shot. Yeah, that's disgusting. So I went and got my four lessons. I had four lessons with the <laughs> assistant pro. And he gave me three gifts that I want to share with you if you're a beginner golfer. You know, these top flights are absolute garbage. Horrible sound and feel off an iron. Horrible to chip with, horrible to putt with. I can't imagine why I played with these, other than the fact that I was broke and I played with whatever I could find in the rough. But I say to guys these days who are playing with rock hard distance balls, I say, why on earth are you playing with that rubbish? And they say, well, I lose three or four balls around. Well, if you're losing three or four balls around, it's because you're hitting clubs that you're not capable of hitting. Take them out of the bag until you can. So I started with the beginner golfer's baseball grip. Now he didn't change that other than to make it a little stronger. And the first lesson was all about aim, posture, ball position, the grip, and just the basics. But in the second lesson, he gave me my first gift. And that gift was the seven iron feet together drill. Where you stand with one inch of daylight between your feet, and you make half a swing with a seven iron and accelerate at the ball. And I still do that drill to this day. In fact, I was doing it Thursday evening. 50 or 60 balls, seven iron feet together, half a swing, and accelerate at the ball. And that is a drill that you can do your entire life, no matter what your age is. Now as a beginner golfer, you miss lots and lots of greens. So you get plenty of opportunities <laughs> to get it up and down. And you never know which hole you're actually going to achieve that on. So sometimes you achieve it on a long hole where you weren't expecting it. Now in the very next lesson, he gave me my second gift. I was on the verge of taking my woods out my bag because I couldn't hit them. I was a huge slicer. And remember, woods back then, your driver was 125 cc's. It was a tiny thing. It had a sweet spot about the size of a gnat's arsehole. So he said, I want you to take these woods out of your bag until you can hit the fairway with a three iron. 
Now the shortest par 3 at Gloucester was 119 yards. It was only a 9-iron. And I used to make a lot of pars on it. And as a beginner golfer, the shortest par 3 on your golf course, you should be targeting that for a par. So I took the woods out of the bag and all I had was a three iron. And by doing that seven iron drill, and by only using the three iron off the tee and a three iron off the fairway, or whatever iron out of the rough, you get better and better. I always say you get better at what you do most often. So if you miss a lot of greens, you will get better at chipping. If you never get it close to the flag, you will get better at lag putting. All you've got is a three iron and you have to use that three iron. You will get better with your three iron. You know, I hear people all the time saying, I can't hit a three iron. I can't hit a three wood off the deck. I can't do this, I can't do the other. Well, that's because you're only trying it once around. I had a friend who couldn't hit driver, but it only came out on the fourth tee, and it, because he was doing this, it made him so nervous, and so anxious, he couldn't hit his driver. So as I say, you get better at what you do most often. Now the third gift he gave to me was very simple. I want you to spend 50% of your time practicing. Seven iron feet together, a bag full, and then seven iron in a full stance, a bag full. Now the fourth lesson I had from him was a simple chipping lesson. Nothing difficult or serious. Now, because I'm up against daylight here, I'm skipping the 15th and 16th. So I'm going to give myself a double bogey for 15 and a single bogey for 16. And then we're on to the 17th and down the hill. Oh, that's too far left as well. What a nice pull. Oh, Simon. It's a top flight Dell, of course it's oh. going to get up. <laughs> <Probably short. laughs> oh my. Top flights don't half go. Bloody hell for it. So the three gifts are very simply the seven iron feet together well, drill. Though. Take the long clubs out of your bag that you can't hit until such time that you can hit them. Thirdly, make 50% of your time visiting the golf course practice. And in September 1989, I broke that hundred. Ta-ra!